All right, hello everyone. This is Patrick in the studio. What we're gonna do today is a palette knife painting. Uh, I was in my local grocery store, saw this beautiful piece of cake. I thought that would be great. I took a bunch of pictures of it. Voila. And then I put a little app on my phone that puts a grid on my photo. There we go. And I put the corresponding grid on here and I was able to draw the piece of cake along with the plate using that grid. It's a very simple, easy, again, people say, well, I can't draw. You don't need to know how to draw that well because this helps get around that. I covered my canvas before I did the drawing with some burnt sienna with acrylic paint because I like the way it's going to set the tone, the overall tone of the painting. And it kind of fills in the gaps when you're painting on a white canvas. You got a little bunch of spots of white if you don't cover everything. Well, you don't have to do this with the burnt sienna. It kind of comes through in places. It actually kind of livens things up, makes your warm colors warmer, makes your cool colors, it complements your cool colors. Here's my palette. I set things up chromatically, just kind of like the cake. I got titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, diazoline purple, ultramarine blue, permanent green, and burnt umber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by painting in, I'm going to call that the frosting or the white that you see in between. Or at least it doesn't look white anymore, but the little stripes in between the colors. So I'm going to take some white drag it across my palette. It makes a little, just a little bit of color in there, so it's not just white. And on the other end, on one end, where my blues and my purples are, my burnt umber, I'm gonna create some nice grays, some cooler grays or warmer grays, depending on the ratio of burnt umber to blue, because I don't wanna just put white in there, I don't think. On the other side, where I have the orange and yellow, I'll mix a little warm in with the white and create some warmer. And then go back and forth a little bit. So I create this sort of interesting array, uh, range of grays that I'm then going to use in my painting. Okay, so let's do that. Let's just throw some grays up here or some frosting in between the layers. Now when I'm using my palette knife, I'm going to pick it up with the edge of the palette knife and then hold that edge against the canvas to get these little areas in here like that. All right, so yes, every time I pick up some paint, I think about how I'm gonna put it on, the angle I'm gonna hold my palette knife, and then I put it up there, like so. Now, a palette knife, it's a little different than a brush, obviously, and if you can do this all, you can follow my directions and do this as a brush painting as well. I like a palette knife because it's thick and chunky and luscious and, you know, I like that about a painting in general. Alright, so far so good. It's kind of like my analogy in talking to my students is kind of like killing a mosquito with a sledgehammer in a way. <laughs> so, but I like it, you know. A little bit of shadow here where the side of the top of the cake is in the shadow. A little darker, cooler gray. It doesn't have to be. I like cooler grays, but also be a warmer gray. That is kind of in the photograph up here. But if I don't like that, I can add a little burnt umber to that. See, I can change that gray, make it a little bit warmer. Let's try that just to see what it looks like. Sometimes you gotta just try things. The thing about painting is if you wanna be good at painting, you just have to paint. Uh, and, you know, some people say I have to wait till I'm inspired. Well, you'll be waiting a long time. Action promotes inspiration, all right? Any good artist knows that. You don't sit around waiting for inspiration. You act and you'll get inspired, all right? And I find that if you get stuck, just give yourself an hour. This is an exercise. Sometimes I get stuck in my studio. I'm not sure what to do next or 
I don't feel inspired. Well, I go to my studio, I give myself an hour to do a painting, and I do that painting in an hour. And even though those paintings are usually terrible, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, it gets me motivated, it gets me moving. So try that. All right, there we go. Now let's throw some color in there. I'm gonna use, and I have napkins here on the side, so I don't have to wipe, stick my palette knife in my turpenoid or clean it off in mineral spirits. I just wipe it off on a piece of paper towel. All right, let's see, what color should we start with? Well, that red's a good place to start. A little cadmium red, alizarin crimson. All right, like so. I'll try to do without the sound effects. <laughs> now I got my orange over here too. I can throw a little orange in there. I can throw a little cadmium red, a little alizarin crimson. I can throw a dash of purple in there. You know, so it's not just red. That gets kind of boring. Uh, I like little bits of color in things. And if I don't like it later on, I can always edit it. So a good artist is not someone who paints or draws perfectly, but a good artist is a good editor. All right, now let's go to my orange. Grab some orange here. It's right next to the yellow. I might throw a little bit of yellow in there. Come in here next to that. I was watching this video by an Australian artist and he made some good points. He said a couple things that resonate. One is he said, do a drawing every day. Do the same, he said, do the same drawing every day. But I'd say, do a drawing every day. It takes you five minutes, 10 minutes, a half hour. Ir irrelevant, just do it. And you'd be surprised, just that little bit, just that drawing every day will, again, get you motivated. That was the one thing. And the other thing he said I already mentioned, which is, of course, don't wait for inspiration. Action will create inspiration. All right. I got a little bit of orange in my yellow, but I'm not worried about that. Big deal. Again, it just makes the yellow more interesting. See these slight little variations? That is just making it yellow. There we go. You can see how the burnt sienna is, you know, working with the colors. And again, the burnt sienna, I use that acrylic paint. You can put oils over acrylics. You just shouldn't put acrylics over oil. So it's just like oil and water don't mix. Now let's grab some green. Now my green is a little too dark, I think, for that. I'm gonna add a little yellow to it. And by the way, the white I'm using, which is titanium white, is an opacifier. Now that's a little too, uh, yellowy. I'm going to add a little more, I'm going to add some blue to that and some more green. Well, that'll make it more interesting. Oh, that's a nice rich green there. There we go. I was making a point a moment ago and I can't remember what it is. It comes back to me. I'll spew it out there. There we go. Oh, I like this already. A lot of times when a student say, where should I start my painting? I always usually say, well, work at the back and work forward because that way you're reinforcing the illusion, background, foreground, start back here. But in a palette knife painting, I like to just go for the subject matter. All right, so I don't think it's as critical. All right, there we go. All right, so far so good. Now, again, there's probably a lot more I can do with that. And you can again, see how the alizarin crimson works. Now I'm gonna go for the plate. Now I'm not gonna do a red plate. I'm just gonna do a white plate. So, I'm using various grays and whites. Now this video, I'm gonna cut it off and do the, go to the second part, which will be doing the plate, because I'm getting up to 10 minutes and YouTube doesn't like long videos, okay? So there we go, there's our first part of the painting. Again, I'm gonna work on the second part here. Imagine lights coming in from this side of the room, going in this direction. Shadow, a little bit of light. All right? Okay, so stay tuned for part two.